Welcome back to another coding challenge video. Uh, today we're going to be doing the time conversion problem from Hack Rank, and we'll be doing it in C Sharp. So the problem statement for this uh, code challenge is pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to be given a time in the 12 hour AM PM format, and we're going to be converting it to uh, military time or the 24 hour format. So um, then it goes on, I guess, to list our input outputs and constraints like usual. We'll be given S, which is a string representation of the time that we're going to be converting. And then it just kind of clarifies what it means when it says 12 hour versus 24 hour time. Um, we'll be getting the time as hours, uh, followed by minutes and then seconds, and then no space, AM or PM. Um, our constraints are what you would probably expect them to be. Our hours are gonna be in between one and 12, and our minutes and seconds are going to be between zero and 59. So, uh, and then finally, I guess our output format is going to be the hours are going to be between 0 and 23 hours and the minutes and seconds will be the same um, because converting between 12 hour format and 24 hour format is not going to mess with the uh, minutes and seconds as we know uh, the only thing that's going to be changing is the hours <clears throat> so in order to solve this problem um, the way that you would probably initially think to do it is by making your own parser. Um, that's probably what they would make you do in school and stuff. And we could do that, but it's sort of tedious. And I, th I was thinking this would probably be a good um, video to show you guys a couple of things you may not know about, um, especially if you're getting into, if you're new to coding. So I'm going to try and show you a couple of tips and tricks um, when it comes to converting times. Um, converting times is one of the hardest problems in computer science. And I'm not just talking about 12 hour to 24 hour. I'm just talking about in general, converting between time zones, converting between how different countries uh, measure their, their days and what calendars they use and when they switched between calendars. I mean, it gets enormously complicated. And so I'm going to be talking a little bit today about the date time class in C sharp and how there's a lot of tools built into that to help you um, do date time things. Uh, a date time is pretty much just something that includes a date and a time, um, as you would probably guess. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of that built in and takes into account all of the many, many, many variables that could exist in, in a problem like this, converting times or dates. And so, yeah, let's uh, jump right into it. So over here in the code, we're getting our string S which i um, not really sure why it's called S. It's uh, going to be our, our time input. So first things first, um, I'm going to make a call to a method called triparse within the date time class. Now, if you've never done anything with triparses, they're uh, very handy and the way they work is they try and parse your input into your output in this in this case our output is the date time so these try parse uh, methods exist in a lot of different classes and the way they pretty much work is they have whatever code to parse your input into your output wrapped within a try catch. If the, the if the conversion is successful, the try parse 
actually returns a boolean whether or not it was successful and then also has an out variable and if your conversion is successful you can test that to see if your output is any good so if that didn't make sense let me just type up the code and i'll try and explain it again so first off we're going to make a boolean to keep track of whether or not our conversion was successful so we'll just name that successful conversion and then we're going to want to call the date time class and the try parse method so try parse is going to take the input string and then we're going to be declaring our uh, oops, our out variable. And I'll explain in one second what that means, but we'll just call that time. So I'll come back to that line because that's pretty much the majority of this video is gonna be on that line. Um, so we'll come back to that in a second. So we'll say if the conversion was successful, if, uh, if successful conversion, then we can uh, return time. And so here is where this problem becomes very simple. So the to string function on a date time object can take a formatter within this. And so um, we have to specify like hours, minutes, seconds. Now here's where it's cool. The, the formatter format is if you have a lowercase h, um, it's going to be putting it out in the 12 hour format. So since we really want the 24, we just make these capitals and the date time class will automatically take care of the conversion for us. So that is the only thing we have to do. Um, if it wasn't a successful conversion, uh, we'll just return hacker rank gave me bad input. <laughs> so if whatever string came in wasn't able to be parsed, then we know that our input was bogus. So for example, if we were given this string and we tried to convert this to a date time, um, this obviously it has no similarity to a date time at all and so the successful conversion would be false um, this won't happen uh, but we just have to have it there because all of our paths in our method or i should say our method yeah all of our paths within the method have to return something so we either have this return statement or a probably better practice would be to just throw an exception Okay, so let's come back to this line and and kind of just dissect what's going on here. So I wish hack rank had a little bit better syntax highlighting, um, which would kind of show that this is a class and this is a, a static method, meaning we don't have to actually create an instance of date time to use this. We can just call it straight from the class. So this is the class, the date time class, we're calling try parse. And like I was saying, many classes have this try parse and the format is usually input string and then an out variable. If you're unfamiliar with out variables, I'll try and explain it as, as simply as I can, but they are sort of a, I don't know, a, sort of a tricky concept. If you've ever done anything in, an, in another language where you have pointers and whatnot, this is sort of similar. An out keyword is more or less saying that you are passing something in by reference instead of copying it. An out is a little bit more complicated than that because you're saying, um, I'm going to be giving triparse a variable called time that's a date time and I actually didn't make it beforehand so just when the compiler goes through here make this variable pass it in and then I'm planning on using that later on so that's more or less what that means 
I have the, I'm going to declare a variable called time and I'm going to give that to my method in the hopes that my method uses it, but then I also want to be able to use it later on. And so the try parse does not actually return this. I don't think that would be the correct way to say that. It returns a Boolean whether or not it was successful in converting S into a date time. And so if our successful conversion came back false, then time would still exist. We'd still be able to use it. However, it would probably be the default value of whatever date time is, which I believe is null. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think it's null. So if this came back as false, then time would be null. If we tried to use it later on, it would be null, which is why we, we, we first want to check this. So there is usually a different version of a try parse, and this is just called parse. Um, what's the difference? Well, try. Um, if you're unfamiliar with try catches, I would recommend go looking that up. But basically the difference between a parse function and a try function is that the try parse function will catch exceptions that happen when the when you try and convert your thing and will kind of like bury that away for you and then just return a false. If you try and do a parse and the and the conversion doesn't work, then an exception will happen and you'll have to handle that on this level. Um, that's not to say one is better than the other. It just kind of depends what kind of behavior you want in your function. So let's go ahead, let's run this, make sure everything's happening correctly. And it looks like it is. Let's go ahead and submit the code. Make sure to pass all of our test cases. Looks like it. Okay, so this is by far the easiest way to do this problem. Um, if, you, if you're up for a challenge, go ahead and try and, and parse it. Um, explaining briefly how I would probably do that is you take your input string and then I'd probably use uh, the colon as a delimiter to split the string into three different parts. This part, this part, and this part. Then you would have to test if AM or PM was on your string. Um, if PM was on there, you'd have to add 12. Um, if it went over 23, you'd have to subtract one. Um, and then you also have two weird cases where if it's 12 right on the dot, AM or 12 right on dot PM, then that's either going to be uh, 0 or um, 20. Is it 24? No, they both go to 0. No, up here. Yeah, I'm getting confused. Anyways, basically, you have some exceptions to the rule. You can't just uh, automatically assume AM, PM, PM at 12, AM, just leave it. So it gets pretty complicated, but if you're up for a challenge and want to try and make your own parser, go for it. However, like I was saying, the date time class is very, very handy. And if your time conversions are getting any more complicated than this, than this uh, problem, just use date time. It's going to save you a lot of work. So as always, if you have a better way to solve this, comment down below. Thanks for watching.